I wanted to mention that uh, Gage, you know, first of all, so I got home on, on Saturday. Surgery was Thursday. I flew home on Saturday. It's unbelievable. Uh, Gage Edward Fredenberg never misses an opportunity to be an asshole. And uh, so I actually wasn't even going to mention it, but this is. I, what, I mean, what, what happened? So what happened was, is that on Tuesday, he picked up Monroe from school. That was his regular day. Mm-hmm. He picks her up at, at noon. And then he was going to he'd keep her. He would keep her Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Mm-hmm. And flying back Saturday. He was return, supposed to return her at noon. So uh, he was checking in with me periodically like, hey, are you still planning on flying home? And I said, yes. I'm, right now, I'm, this was Friday. I said, I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm still booked to fly tomorrow. I'll let you know. So I sent him a text. I said, uh, good morning. I'm headed back to L.A. today. I land at 2 p.m., but Zoila and Aurora are expecting you. So I made sure that I had people here right. when, to receive uh, her. To, receive. to reserve, receive her. Uh, he says, we're going to leave here around 1130 or noon so she can be back when you're home. I won't drop, I won't drop to a nanny prior to your arrival back into California. Why not? He was two hours away. That, that was what he meant. But I'll leave at 1130. Meet us here at 2. Oh. Yeah. Where was he? uh, Palm Springs. With Monroe. During COVID. Yeah. So um, he's not going to bring her home at noon. White party. Mm. He's not going to leave her with a nanny. So he's going to, he'll be dropping her off later. He's going to leave at 1130 to noon. What's more convenient? Yeah. So I said, I don't think that's how our custody schedule works, but I'm not going to fight about it. Right. I said, I'll forward this to Jacqueline, my attorney, Mm -hmm. because I was just like, I don't, that's the smart thing to do. I don't feel well. Stay out of it. I'm on meds. I don't want to deal with it. And she should know. The attorney should know. Of course. And he wrote, sounds good. And he wrote, unless you're physically back in town, I won't have my daughter sitting with staff. That's what the first right of refusal option in custody is. You're traveling out of town until you're back in town. Monroe will be back at three o'clock. Oh, my God. So I was like, did you forward it to your attorney? Yeah. Okay. But so I got, so first of all, you know, I'm paying people to be here. Of course. And the other thing and too. And capable people who, she's no, who, who she, she loves and knows yeah. and has been with from, you know, the guest. And I haven't seen her, you know, I haven't seen her for four nights. And the, the whole goal was, is that, you know, I had everything organized. So they were going to feed her, bathe her, everything. So that way, and let her acclimate. Cause when she comes home, she's tired mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and let her relax and let her acclimate. So I got home from the airport, like two thirty, two forty, And then she was dropped off. At three, but I, I just don't see how you can make your own custody schedule. Like, I don't, you know, yeah. we have a set in stone. I don't see how you could just drop her off three hours late. Yeah, he had a bee in his bonnet. Something was going on. But remember the last time I got back from surgery, he had uh, filed, he had threatened to file the lien against mm-hmm. this house. So I, it's just, I, I, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to well, do. I, I just, think you did the right thing. You I think did you the just, right thing by giving it to your attorney and let, don't engage. And let them handle it. Yeah. You can't engage. You can't get in a fight. You can't. It's it's not worth it. Because everything you say just gives him more ammunition. And it's exhausting. It is exhausting. Yeah. And it's just like, why? Right. There's no Why place. are you doing why this? Is dumb? So, why is it so contentious? And then the other thing I'm noticing, too, which is um, I'm always very careful about what I say in front of her. Right. I'm always very um, friendly and respectful to him mm-hmm. in front of her. But yesterday, when he picked her up, he picked her up at um, 10. And I, I went out and I, I look him at the eye and I said, I said, Hey, thanks for picking her up because I couldn't drive. Mm-hmm. And I said, if you need, so I look at him and I said, if you need uh, me to pick her up tomorrow at noon, I said, I can have Shane drive. Mm-hmm. If that, if that uh, helps you, oh. that helps you. He doesn't even look at me in the eye. So not only does he not even respond to me, he doesn't even look at me in the eye. Like mm-hmm. he just ignores me. And I'm thinking, dude, like your daughter our daughter is seeing this. Like right. you're, you're so blatantly rude and disrespectful and frankly hostile. In front of her. In front of her. And you don't think she's going to pick this up? No, they right, do. Right. They're sponges. Of course. But I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. There's no, I think the best thing to do is just, just not engage. Just try and get your point across and then don't, you know, don't, don't give in to it. Don't meet him at his level. Yeah, you can't. Saying, yeah. Just... Yeah. Uh, so I, had, I, I, I screenshot the text. I sent it to Jacqueline. My attorney, and she just wrote, um, I will tell you that his statement, I won't have my daughter, is very telling on how he views things mm-hmm. and is very frowned upon. She said, sorry, you're dealing with this, so I'm yeah. going to talk to her today. Perfect. But God, I just, it's like a no-win. It's like a no-win situation. It, I don't know. When, I mean, it takes time for it to get better, but it, it does get better. It will get better. 
I don't know, uh, Megan. It, I think it will. I think in time. Well, the other thing too, I didn't I didn't mention because I did I just didn't want to bring it up in the air. But um, my family does Christmas Eve every mm-hmm. year, and uh, so he specifically won't let me have her on Christmas Eve, even though his family's uh, in Arizona. Oh. So uh, he's going to pick her up Christmas Eve, and he's not going to bring her back till noon on Christmas Day. And I appealed to him. I begged him. I said, "Look, this is the only time my family gets together. Mm-hmm. You know, she wants to see her grandparents. She's actually even asked. She's like, am I going to see grandma? Am I going to see grandpa?'" You know, when you're in a situation, I don't want to be like, you know, daddy won't let you see her. I was just said, you know, we're going to see them a few days after Christmas. Will you flip it next year? Will you get her Christmas Eve next year? Well, he he doesn't. I think he was a little surprised when I said that. I said, well, first of all, holidays, I believe, are negotiated separately from our custody schedule. Mm -hmm. And I said, I believe the way it works is that because you took her on Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve and half of Christmas, next year will be my holiday. that's That's how that's what our custody arrangement is. Well, that's what's going on. 